William T. Sherman was born on February 8, 1820 in Lancaster, Ohio. His father died when he was a little boy, and his widowed mother was unable to care for him. So she sent him to live with his aunt. In a short time, he became foster child of Thomas Ewing, a friend of his father's. Later, he married Mr. Ewing's daughter, Ellen. William went on to college at the Military Academy at West Point. In 1840, he graduated during the Mexican-American War. He never received any combat roles in the war. He was only posted to San Francisco, where he found gold and resigned his military career for the time being. A few years had passed, and Sherman had moved to Louisiana and was superintendent of the Louisiana State Seminary and Military Academy. He resigned in 1861 after the talks of succession and stated, I maintain my allegiance to the Constitution as long as a fragment of it survives. In May of the same year, he wrote to the Secretary of War offering his services for the next three years. On June 20, 1861, he was given the rank of colonel and assumed command of a brigade. He was stationed at Stonebridge during the First Battle of Bull Run and was routed by Confederate forces there. In August of 1861, he was moved to Kentucky and promoted to Brigadier General in Kentucky. He was under the command of Brigadier General Robert Anderson. By October, he had replaced Anderson. After replacing Anderson, he wrote a letter to the Secretary of War saying, If I had 60,000 men, I would drive the enemy out of Kentucky. If I had 200,000, the war would be over in this section. The press had a frenzy with these statements and called Sherman crazy. And due to all the pressure from the public, Sherman was relieved of duty in November of 1861. For almost three months, Sherman was out of active duty and finally returned on February 13, 1862, and assumed command of a post in Paducah, Kentucky, relieving Ulysses S. Grant. In March, he was reassigned in the Army of Tennessee and given the 5th Division of this army. They saw their first battle at Shiloh, where they were almost defeated until reinforcements arrived. Later that year, Sherman had failed to capture Vicksburg, but Grant finally did capture it. Sherman was next put in command of the Army of Tennessee in the fall of 1863 and fought the Battle of Chattanooga, where he unsuccessfully battled Confederate troops on Missionary Ridge. Later, the Union did capture the ridge. In the next year, Sherman was made Supreme Commander of the Armies in the West. Grant ordered Sherman to create havoc and destruction of all beneficial resources to the enemy. He was given 98,797 men and 254 cannons to do so. On May 4, 1964, Sherman began his Atlanta campaign, outflanking the enemy and pushing them back to Atlanta. He attacked and seized Atlanta from Confederate clutches and declared Atlanta a military encampment and then ordered all civilians out and arranged with Confederate Commander John Hood for a safe exit of civilians. Hood made several unsuccessful attacks on Atlanta. Hood began marching northward trying to cut Sherman off. Sherman said jokingly, if he continues to march north all the way to Ohio, I will supply him with rations. Sherman then planned to then plan the infamous march to the sea, which would split the Confederacy in two. He kept 60,000 battle-hardened men and sent the rest off to Nashville. Sherman used scorched-earth tactics, burning everything that wasn't an asset to his army to the ground. Sherman later stated that he never intended to burn Atlanta to the ground, but the fire got out of control. Sherman split the Confederacy, cutting a swath of 60 miles wide and marched to Savannah, destroying anything that... On December 23rd, Sherman telegrammed Lincoln, saying he was presenting Lincoln with a gift, the city of Savannah. After Sherman's victory at Savannah, he battled General Johnston through the Carolinas, and on April 17th, Johnston surrendered eight days after Lee surrendered to Grant. After the war ended, Sherman was given the rank of Lieutenant General. After Grant's election to the presidency, he was made a full general and given the U.S. Army. He retired by 1883, and he died eight years later in New York City at the age of 71.